So I'm kind of jonesing for another upgrade, a uh, display upgrade this time. But let's talk about why I'm thinking about upgrading my TV in the living room before I worry about upgrading a projector for the theater. So on both my entertainment spaces right now, the theater and the home theater, I'm actually running some really nice displays. In the living room, I've got a 2020 model Sony X900H 85-inch television, and in the projector, uh, in the in and in the theater room, I have a JVC NX7. And of course, display technology has already moved forward. JVC has the new projector models out, the lasers. Sony's announced their new lasers, and of course, new TVs come out every year. Sometimes adding major features and capabilities. Sometimes adding not so much, maybe some brightness, some HDR performance, and, and, and that sort of thing. Money no object, I would love to both buy a newer model television for the living room and a laser projector for the theater for a variety of virtues that either one of those upgrades would give me. The laser would be quieter, it would be faster to turn on, it would sync better, higher brightness, and if I could swing the money all the way up to like something like an NZ9, I'd obviously be stepping up in performance over something like an NX7, although I don't know that I would I would necessarily go that far. I'm I'm really kind of gonna f I'm I'm really intending here, and and really as I'm recording this, pulling the trigger on an upgrade for the living room over the home theater in terms of the display device, and I'm doing it sooner than I would generally like to. I've only had that television up there maybe two and a half or so years. But I want to talk about a couple reasons why I'm focusing my display dollars and my next display upgrade, pulling the trigger earlier than I might really like to in the living room. And so honestly, the big reason has to do with gaming. And the fact that for like real cutting edge gaming features, the Sony X900 just kind of fa failed to deliver. Now that set was amongst the first of the HDMI 2.0 displays that had come out and all of the features were promised. Full 48 gigabit per second HDMI 2.1, 4K 120 hertz image rendering, and VRR was coming. All of the cool new gaming options and, and technology pieces and so on that I was very, very much looking forward to take advantage of from my PC and the current new generation gaming consoles and all that stuff. And while that TV has been really great and an incredible, incredible value in many respects, the, the, the picture quality for TV watching and some movie watching has been awesome. The, the value of the TV, I got it somewhere in the mid like $2,000 range. That's a heck of a lot of television, you know, for about 2,500 bucks. Years ago, I spent close to six grand, I think, for a 57 inch local dim LCD, a Samsung back when that technology was new. So you look at the economies of scale, six grand for a 57 versus 2,500 for an 85. It's just crazy, crazy delta there. But Sony tried to turn all those features on. They tried to enable the stuff. And the reality is you can't get 4K 120 on that model year of Sony television. You get basically like half 4K 120 because in order for the TV to render at 120 hertz, it has to cut down the vertical resolution, cut it in half. I, I wasn't aware of this at, uh, going back, but it is, such seems to be the case around a lot of panels now. You don't get variable refresh rate for gaming without losing local dimming, and, and in some cases a whole host of uh, picture options and picture features um, on an LCD set. I really want my gaming experience to be cutting edge. I want to take advantage of all that stuff, particularly on PC where I've got a powerful enough computer to be able to run, legitimately run games at 4K 120 and, and use VRR and, and those kind of features. You got the PlayStation 5 now supporting VRR and running a lot of games in a 120 hertz container, meaning you want that bandwidth, you want that stretch, that range of frame rate possibility to be able to sync the display and the, and the gaming device together with VRR. The Xbox Series X, of course, can already do it. And so I was really bumming over these last couple weeks, upgrading the PlayStation and really figuring out how to get better, higher, higher frame rate using VRR between my 3090 Ti uh, P gaming PC and that television and finding just like failure mode. It's splotchy, uh, 
splotchy image with no local dimming and such enabled, the half resolution with the, the 120 hertz connection. And so I kind of got fed up with it a bit. I, I, I really do tend to game more in the living room than in the theater. Going back to some of my recent videos talking about like the usage and such, it's just so much nicer, easier, simpler to, to plop down in the living room, sit on the couch, fire up a game for myself or with me and my son or the family. And so that's kind of the zone where we do that. I think the JVC NX projector in the theater is still aces for movie watching, high-end TV show watching and all that. Yeah, would an NZ be better? Yes, but the NX really isn't lacking for anything. It's a phenomenal projector. I haven't even burned through my first bulb and I've got another one sitting here. I got the free replacement back when I, I had bought the projector originally. So I've got a lot of I've got a life a lot of life ahead of me using that NX projector in there before I have to worry about it buying another bulb or, or putting some money into it. And so I don't know, spending for the NZ versus getting that impactful gaming performance up in the living room just is really pushing me towards wanting to wanting to put some more money into the display device the display device of the living room over the theater by by a pretty significant margin and as it is even if i wanted to come game in the theater all of that cutting edge stuff doesn't really fully work on the projectors anyway of course the nx isn't 4k 120 it's not hdmi 2.1 but if you look at even the jvcs yeah they did hdmi 2.1 and they did 4k 120 but they didn't do vrr and so having 120 hertz output is really kind of hamstrung without VRR. And I'm gonna make some specific videos kind of about that concept in PC VRR and console VRR and such with the TVs coming up. But suffice to say, I'm not that enamored to wanna to play games on the projector in the theater, despite the room, despite the screen size and the audio down there and all of that, because it's the performance of the game that makes a lot of the experience and you just get better performance on a flat panel than a projector and the flat panels have those features those new features they have them all completely and properly implemented the right way and the projectors are lacking and even the new sony lasers that were just announced they don't they're they're missing like hdmi 2.1 features and such as well so kind of a miss in the gaming realm for projectors input latency all, all that stuff it just favors a flat panel and i really want to do some more gaming that, that takes my attention, takes my focus, and it's taking my dollars in, into the living room versus the theater. So that's really part and parcel of, of the like second big reason, again, is just those gaming features. And if you look at what panels can do all of that stuff and what display technology can kind of accomplish everything that you're looking for, who's really focused in terms of, of TV makers and display device makers on gaming, you know, being up front with all the features, doing them right, making them work, supporting everything. So my focus has now been towards uh, specifically an LG OLED and looking at like an 83 inch OLED, most likely the G2, potentially over the C2 and replacing the Sony 85 with the LG 83, thus enabling me to turn on all those features from any of the devices that I have, whether I keep the consoles or I keep the PC. 4K 120 is going to look like going to work like it's supposed to. That TV has the, the HDMI 2.1 full bandwidth 48 gigabit ports on it. It has four of them. Even in the current panel year, 2022 panel year, Sony's still only including two HDMI 2.1 ports on their televisions. That's that's not enough in my opinion. Like at this point, all of the ports on a display should be the same spec, full 48 HDMI 2.1. But LG just does it all. VRR with FreeSync and G-Sync flavors, and I've got the PC here with an NVIDIA GPU, being able to take advantage of real V-Sync or real G-Sync, not just HDMI VRR. Uh, the ability to pull up a game bar. One of the thing that's one of the things that's killed me with that Sony over the last couple years is setting certain stuff up, uh, right, playing games, setting up settings, but not being able to validate anything on the TV because the TV just doesn't give you any information about what it's doing. Yeah, it'll show you resolution and it'll show you whether you're in HDR mode or not, but it doesn't tell you refresh rate. It doesn't even tell you whether like VRR is engaged between the devices, like none of that stuff. And, and I'm really drawn to having the LG Game Bar kind of functionality where you can pull that thing up. You can get a very specific indication of status of, of what gaming features are on, what's off, you can toggle stuff, you can customize stuff, 
you can measure performance and see the state of everything. It's just such a better gaming device in an LG than in some of the other panels and such that are out there. And so Sony really needs to step its game up for gaming displays. And that it sounds so wild to say that because you're talking about one of the time one of the prime top companies in the world making gaming hardware and their TV is behind lagging behind the pack on being like the best TV to use with their own gaming hardware. It doesn't make sense like the left hand and the right hand kind of don't even don't know what they're doing right to work together or, or work in concert and I think LG kind of has that. And so you couple a couple of you you add a couple of other elements to that as well. You know the fact that an OLED doesn't have to lo doesn't have a local dimming structure like an LED or LCD. You know every pixel dims on its own. Instant response, infinite contrast, all that stuff. I'm really really excited. I haven't I haven't really experienced an OLED before. Yeah, I've, I've walked through stores and shops and I've looked at them, but my personal use has all been LCD panels. I had a couple Vizios before the Sony, Samsung before that. Never had an OLED. So this will be my first time, and I'm really interested to see, well, I'm sure it's going to have its own pros and it's going to have its cons compared to the to what I'm used to and what I've used to date. But just in terms of all of those features and capabilities, it feels like a better buy as a gaming for a gaming-focused use case. If I were just using that Sony for movies and TV, and I didn't care about having, you know, all the way up to 120 FPS in my games, and I didn't care about having or I couldn't seize on using all of those super cutting edge gaming features, then I'd be perfectly happy. I wouldn't be looking to upgrade that panel right now and that 85 inch Sony would be hanging in my living room for probably a number of years to come. And so a friend of mine is actually going to take it and uh, I'd say I'm a little more exacting in my technology demands and a little more specific in my, my wants and my technology demands and such than, than he is for how he uses his display and the sources he has and how they're hooked up. So that TV is going to be awesome for him. Win-win deal. I'll be able to really do a lot more with my hands on that LG than what the Sony's has provided here with their kind of failure to deliver on their stated features. If, if they could at least have gotten the 4K 120 to proper rendering and full resolution rendering, maybe I would have just accepted the lack of local dimming uh, you know, for the extra money that I'm spending in this case, and just accepted VRR without local dimming, but it, it's the the cut down resolution is just too much. It makes no sense at all to buy all these gaming consoles to have this PC directly connected to that display, capable of doing all of these things, and then have the display itself not able to actually render what these devices are are outputting or, or are capable of, of outputting. And so I want a game with all that stuff turned on, running properly, properly supported, and whatnot. So that's really driving kind of that decision. And then the other thing that I was looking at, kind of a third big reason is, and spinning out of my, my last video too, musing on the idea of like, do you really want a home theater? And is how much more I use the living room than the theater room. And yeah, I just did all this home theater 2.0 stuff. And we've watched a few movies in there since we've done it. Spring starting outdoor sports and stuff are picking up time time is getting even more challenged it's it's light light out later so getting into our theater room is is having an even higher barrier of entry barrier of time and stuff to do that and so in the last couple of weeks or whatnot i've hardly even been in there we watched in kanto and that i think that's been the last movie we've done in there and probably nigh on about three weeks and so that really makes, but, but every night after the kids go to bed, usually I'm sitting in the living room, I'm reading, surfing the internet, playing a game, watching a TV show by myself or with my wife, something, but that, that, that living room TV is on. And so, you know, maybe I get an hour or two, a couple hours of time, M most nights, the majority of the nights of the week where I'm using that living room and then maybe one night a week or one night every other week, you know, we're using that theater. So I, I would estimate it's probably like a, at least a five to one usage ratio for every hour we put in the theater. I'm, I've got five hours of time spent in the living room. And that's been a big reason why I wanted to kind of funnel more money up there. Like I really love the Focal speakers, the 1000 series and their performance in the theater. So as soon as I heard that, as soon as we had that in there, it's like, man, I want those, I want that speaker 
in the living room. And as soon as I got this Anthem set up, the AVM70, and we got it all dialed in and got ARC and all that stuff set up in the theater room and listened to it and said, wow, you know, this, all this stuff, it worked so well. I really want to be able to calibrate the living room. I want to have kind of the sound quality as well up in the living room. So, you know, I did that, getting the Anthem STR, putting the Focal 1000 pair in the living room. I, I kind of lucked out with the way the Parasound amps work, so I, I liked the sound, the tone of that stuff in the theater. I've got it with the same match to processing and speaker playback in the, in the living room, but that, that display device in the living room is just lacking. And if I'm going to spend a couple grand putting it in, to another upgrade like this, I'm just I'm more I'm hard pressed now with the realities of our usage to put more money in the theater. The theater is really good; it's squared away. This is kind of the last piece, probably, of the living room for a while. I've got all the audio where I want it to be. This is going to lock in the video, and I'm really curious to see how I feel about the picture quality for movies and TV shows, you know, of the OLED and comparing what will probably be impactful picture quality versus, you know, still very nice picture quality in the theater, but, you know, the theater adds size. Yeah, we've got an 83 in the living room, but I'm sitting about the same distance back in my living room as I sit in the theater. Relationally speaking, the theater is much more visually impactful, but I'm really curious how a big OLED like that might just trounce a projector um, in terms of picture quality and black levels and HDR performance, particularly with the new, you know, the latest model. LG and such. So I'm waiting for my shipment. Mid-May is the projected uh, delivery of that and I'm going to blow the doors off of that television with content of course on the channel and, and being able to really really compare now apples to apples and similar level of implementation quality you know for the living room versus the theater and, and perspective on why you may want to do one or not do the other and that sort of thing. So Look for a whole bunch of content uh, on that coming up. Seems to be a lock. I'm just waiting for it to come at this point. And I haven't pulled any sources out, so I'm going to keep the consoles. I'm going to keep the PC for the time being. I want to get that display in. I want to hook everything up to it and really be able to, you know, go PlayStation versus PC, Xbox versus PC, and and really play with and, and understand the experience of using the LG versus the Sony and the Vizios before that and the OLED and the LCDs and, and all of that. So I think the theater is awesome, but I mean, the, re the real reality is we spend a much significant, larger portion of our time uh, with content and just chilling out, relaxing, whatever together, you know, still in the living room. So keep that in mind. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any questions, ask them away in the comments. Uh, feel free, please do, please, please, please like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Share the content if you've got friends in, in other places that might be interested in the things that I'm talking about. Help to help us grow this tech enthusiasm. And uh, stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching.